I'm going to break down the process that we use to split test cold email campaigns to get a 5% plus reply rate so that you could scale your business and start signing more clients using cold email. I'm also going to show you a cheat code that makes this process super simple with minimal waste. Now this process works for any type of business, no matter the niche or the size, whether you're doing $1,000 in revenue a month or if you're doing seven, eight figures in revenue like many of the clients that we manage. We have tested this process thousands and thousands of times and it has proven over and over again to three, four, even five X the results that you can get from your cold email campaigns. Now, there's a few things before jumping into the process that I wanna make clear that you must know that are important leading steps up to the split testing for campaign. So make sure to stick around for this video. It's value packed. I promise you're gonna love it. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing when you're getting ready to launch your first campaign is you wanna make sure that the people that you're reaching out to are very targeted, that your ideal customers, because any sort of split testing of your cold email campaigns really doesn't mean anything. And you're not gonna be able to accurately depict whether one script works better than the other if you're reaching out to a bad lead list. So I put a lot of stress on this because it is so important to make sure that the first lead list that you built is laser targeted. And there's a few different ways that you can go about this, a couple of different websites that you could use. You know, there's like the generic platforms out there to build a lead list from scratch, such as Apollo.io. There's Zoom Info, there's Lucia, there's Hunter, there's ListKit. Those are all great platforms. The only thing is the data could be pretty inaccurate and a lot of people will just use industries in order to build out their lead lists. And the problem is, like I've mentioned, that lead list is not gonna be that accurate. So what I like to do is I like to use a platform that allows me to find a laser targeted company list before finding the contacts. And the biggest cheat or hack for this is using a platform such as ocean.io. But what I want to do here is I want to build a lead list of roughly four to 5,000 contacts because we want to make sure that we have a big sample size and enough data to really make a firm decision on whether or not one angle works than the other. And I'll show you more of what I mean by that. But giving you a quick preview of Ocean here, essentially, if you have great customers and you want to find more of those, or if you have an ideal company website, like a customer that you would love to work with, you just go ahead and plug it right in here. And then Ocean is going to go and use AI and scrape the internet and find different keywords, filters, tags, industries. And it's going to find you all of the lookalikes that are essentially mirror images of the website URL that you had plugged in. So this gives me the company list that I want to reach out to. And from here, you want to enrich these companies with contacts and email addresses. So I'm going to export all the companies that I want to scrape from here. And then I'm going to bring them into a platform, you know, such as Apollo. Apollo is super cheap, affordable. It's got a ton of data in here. So you'll essentially just come into Apollo. You'll just paste all the company website URLs. And then you plug in different filters for job titles. So if you're looking to get in touch with you know, the managing director or managing partner of these law firms for this specific example, then you can go ahead and filter that. Once you have your final lead list, you export it from Apollo. And there's one more step to make sure that these leads are good. You need to validate and verify these leads. So if you want to hop on over to millionverifier.com, you now have your lead list CSV file, which you're going to plug right in here into millionverifier.com. It's going to clean and validate these lists for you. And it's going to tell you whether or not the contacts are deliverable, whether they're risky or they're undeliverable. The ones that are deliverable or okay or safe to send to, those are ready to rock and roll. And the final outcome of your lead list is going to look something like this. You essentially just have a spreadsheet that's going to show all of the different law firms that I had gotten from Ocean with the contacts filtered by the positions that I'm trying to get in touch with. These are all validated, verified. And as I'd mentioned, you want a nice sample size. I always like to do anywhere from three to 5,000 contacts for my initial campaign. And the reason for this brings us to our next step and the real topic of this conversation, which is split testing and how to accurately split test and make sure that you're sending the right messages and you're analyzing your data correctly to make sure that you have a confident decision and your future campaigns work out well. So here at Buzzly, what we like to do is we like to split test a couple of different things. One, we wanna split test how we wanna actually position our offer. And we like to split test it anywhere from four to 10 different variations. So when we're reaching out to that initial lead list, we're essentially gonna position our offer in this case, eight different ways. And then we're going to basically randomize the lead list that we're sending messages to. We're going to use a different script 
or a different offer across those different contacts. And I'm gonna show you once we jump into Smartly the cheat that makes it really easy, but essentially we wanna test out different angles of how we position our offer. We wanna test out different campaign ideas for the future in case this first campaign doesn't work out too well. And one thing I wanna make clear is your first campaign is never gonna be as great as your follow-up campaigns unless you really know what you're doing. But typically it takes trial, iteration, split testing and analyzing your data in order to increase the conversion rates. So if you don't get a 5% plus reply rate on your first campaign, don't be alarmed or anything like that. I promise you that's normal. But here we've got the campaign ideas that we want to split test in the future. We also have call to actions that we want to split test. So different hooks or magnets or incentives that we want to get to get people to book a call with us. It could be a free consultation and a review account setup. It could be a Google ads audit. It could be mock campaigns that we do for them or a competitive takedown strategy so they could see how they can beat out their competitors with Google ads. And then you take all these different variations and you're gonna plug them into your different scripts. So now we've got all of our scripts written out here. We have spin tax, so don't mind that it looks wordy. Spin tax is just helping us improve our email deliverability. But we've written out our three-step sequence and now this is the cheat code that makes things super simple. So we love using smart leads and within smart leads, what you'll find is that we have the email campaign tab. And if we were to go ahead and take this Google sheet, we're just gonna go ahead and plug this into smart lead. And here you could see all the different variants. So it's a three-step cold email campaign. We've taken all of these different uh, scripts and angles that we ended up plugging down here and we simply just plug it into Smart Lead here. And now you can see that there's 10 different variations. We have a lead list of, I think, roughly four to 5,000 leads that I had shown you. Essentially, if we're looking at the volume here, so yeah, this list has 5,000 contacts. We have 10 different variations. And the reason for those numbers is we wanna make sure that each of these different variants sends roughly 500 emails. Because if you're only sending 20 emails and then making a decision on whether or not that was a good performing script or not, it's just not enough data to really give you a concrete answer. So I always, always, always say, try to test with at least 500 emails per variant. And then this is a new campaign that we're getting it ready to launch. So I don't have the results here to show you on this one. But if we jump over to another example, I wanna show you how we now analyze the data and what we wanna do from here to optimize our future campaigns. Let's say I jump into here and Smart Leads makes it super easy. So I could see this campaign had 4,800 leads. Now I just wanna scroll on down and take a look and we could see what the reply rates are for each of these. We could see what the you know positive reply rates are, what the bounce rates are. And essentially we just wanna make sure that we're selecting all the ones that are higher performing. And the biggest sense that one is performing better than the other is looking at like the positive reply rates. And of course the reply rates in general, the ones that are higher are clearly better performing. And so what we'll wanna do is take a look at these and we could see in D were great, G was good, and we wanna remove all the ones that weren't, but we could essentially just decide, you know, C, D, G, and let's just say, I don't know, A. But then when you come over here, you go back into the sequence tab, and then you essentially just turn off or turn on the ones that are underperforming. So as you could see, we originally had these eight different messages. We analyzed the results after sending roughly 500 emails per different variant. And now we are removing all the ones that underperformed and we're only keeping the ones that had performed well. So any future campaign now that we run, if you wanna do a true, true test, we could essentially now split test four different messages instead of eight. And then we're gonna see of these top performing four, which are really the best. And if there's no clear indicator of one or the other, you could always test out different messages, but you essentially wanna continue doing this process because it's trial and iteration and your first campaign is always trying to figure out what sticks, what doesn't. The next campaign, you have a better idea. So you narrow down your messaging and your scripts around what previously worked. And then you continue doing that process over and over again. And eventually you get to the point where you're having, you know, five to 10% plus reply rates and you have a kick-ass cold email campaign. I want to keep this video short, but hopefully that essentially helps you out just to reiterate what we had talked about. You want to make sure that when you're split testing your cold email campaigns, you have a rock solid lead list to start off. You want to make sure you have an ample amount of data. I like to say three to 5,000 leads. And I always want to make sure that I'm sending about 500 emails to each of these different variants. And after all of those leads have been contacted for the first time, analyze your data, remove the losers, hammer down on the winners, 
and then continue optimizing that process until you end up seeing, you know, your conversions rates really shoot through the roof. Now, behind every successful cold email campaign that we've run, we have sent thousands of split testing emails that's helped us validate what offers and scripts work. That's ultimately led to our clients closing over $7 million in revenue from cold email. And although split testing is extremely important, it's crucial, it's a must, you need to make sure that you know how to write your scripts, how to ideate the process, and how to really position your offer. And if you're not quite sure how to do that and you enjoyed this video, then just make sure to stick around for the next video where we're gonna teach you how to craft your offer, how to write your scripts, and essentially position yourself well to succeed with cold email. See you in the next one, guys.